Hi, my name is Michael Seacrest. I'm one of the developers on the SpeedTree team, and I'll be walking you through some SpeedTree modeler basics in this video. We'll start by making a new tree model from scratch, and we'll use the template system to get going. So if I right click in here, add template trunk, and we'll make a standard real time trunk. So we add that. You can see we've got a new item here in the generation editor and uh, a trunk in the, in the tree window here. The uh, next thing we'll do is to this, we'll add a set of branches and we'll do standard real time branches. So if I zoom on the generation editor, we now have three elements in here the trunk, level one, level two, and you can see a, a you know, decent tree model in the tree window. Uh, the next thing we'll do is, is create a material to put on this tree. So I'll go to the materials tab. I will add uh, broadleafbark.tj. This is one of the texture maps that comes as, with the samples of SpeedTree. Open it up. You can see that it found uh, automatically found the normal map associated with it. It's based on the naming convention. And I will take this material and drag it from the asset bar down to the trunk and drop it on there. We can also see a few other things about it. There's a uh, assign a different color set to it, and go edit that, and maybe brighten it up a little bit, and. Maybe we'll add a, uh, another material, a cap material, to put on the broken or, or uh, edges of the branches. Add that guy and zoom in on here and drop that on there. So now the broken parts will have a nice cap texture on them as well. And if we click on the trunk, we can show you where these materials are assigned manually. If you want to do it that way, there's a materials group, and you can see the branch and the cap, and you can see where the different materials in the scene are available here on this combo box. Okay, so the next thing I want to do is add, add some leaves to the tree, and I'll do that by clicking on level 2, adding a template, leaves, standard real-time leaves. So these are camera-facing leaf cards uh, by default, and you can put meshes on that, which I'll do in a moment. For that, I want to add a leaf material, so I'll go and add uh, sample leaves 1, open that so we have a new material, sample leaves 1, assign it a leaves color set, and go edit that and brighten that guy up as well. Then come back to the material and drop it on there. So now we have leaves. These are still camera facing leaf cards at this point. Uh, if we want to make it something else, I can go to the meshes tab, add a mesh. And in this case, I'll use crossfoil. And these are uh, STM files, which stands for speed tree mesh, but they can also be OBJ or FBX files uh, of your choosing or use ones out of our library. So I'll use crossfoil. Add that, we get a preview of what it looks like in here. And then I'll drop that on the leaf geometry. And now we have a mesh in there instead of the camera facing leaf cards. And if I zoom in, you can see that pretty well. So that sort of covers starting with nothing and getting a tree with some uh, materials on it in place in the editor. And now I want to talk about the difference between uh, generators and nodes when you're editing a tree. So if I expand this guy a little bit and we zoom out and see all the different parts in here. The, uh, each one of these circles is called a generator, and it represents a group of geometry. In some cases, it may be making one thing, like in the case of the trunk, and I'm going to change the selection style of wireframe to make it a little more obvious. Or it could be generating multiple things, in the case of level one, level two, or, or the leaf, brand, the leaf uh, nodes here. So when you edit a generator property, and it makes it a little more obvious, I'm going to turn off leaf rendering. I'm going to go to level one and go to the spines length. When I edit the length of a generator, it edits the length of everybody that that generator makes. So I'm editing a whole class of things at one time. Um, similarly, you could do a start angle and these other procedural, procedural parameters of the tree model. You can also take uh, first and last and control where that it's eligible for things to grow. And I'm not going to go into detail about all the different options here, but this is just the general gist of how you uh, operate and edit tree models. Let me get this length back into something that looks a little more reasonable. And now you can also get down and edit an, any individual part of the tree you want. You do that by switching into node editing mode with that button right there. So in node editing mode I can click on any part of the tree. I can uh, move it around, change where it goes, spin it around. And if you, uh, if you change the length now, this is an offset to the parameter that the generator gave it. So it says link zero, that means add zero to what the generator says. So if I go in here and do this, I can make this one longer, I can make it shorter, I can change its start angle either by doing it like that or coming here and grabbing this manipulator and doing the same thing. So uh, when you switch to node editing mode, you can move around any individual part of a tree. That includes, uh, that includes leaves. You can take a single leaf and delete it. 
you can take a leaf and, and change anything about it. You can make it larger or smaller, anything you want to do. So generators get large sets of objects, and node editing mode gets um, one at a time. And if you notice that when I'm back in the generation mode here, when you click on the generator, the node that I edited by hand is, is highlighted in a different color, so you can see which nodes you've edited and which ones you haven't. And if I then come back and edit something else, like say disturbance, notice that the thing I hand edited or node edited gets a uh, gets the new value, but it retains the edits I made, so it's still in the position I, I put it in. It still has the length I gave it, so that you can continue to edit the broad categories and maintain the the smaller uh, node edits that you made uh, manually. Uh, that concludes this video. Uh, thanks for watching. Look for more instructional videos on the Speedtree YouTube channel and at speedtree.com.